Hello, friends, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Greg. It's my privilege just to share a short message with you this morning uh, on Christmas presents. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wow, Greg, that shirt is loud, really loud. And uh, I'll be honest with you, it's not my normal uh, style, but I'm wearing this today in honor of my good friends, Ella Kay and Essa, who uh, a little over two weeks ago gave birth to a be- beautiful baby girl, Zanito, and I believe we have a photo of her as well. There she is. Uh, her name is Zanito, or it means uh, darkness must cease. And you know, we, at Christmas time, we celebrate um, Jesus being born, but here's a, a real baby being born just recently. They gave me this shirt, by the way, which is uh, why I'm wearing that today, and I think it's very festive. Uh, so Christmas presents is what we're talking about. I just want to take a few minutes and share something with you. You know, someone's presence is something that we can experience uh, whether we know the person or not. You know, when you walk past someone, maybe you're walking past someone in the high street and you smell their perfume, you can experience some of their presence without actually seeing them or knowing them. Uh, I have the privilege of sleeping in bed with a wife every night, um, and one of the things of my wife's presence is a warm body next to me, Uh, sometimes too warm that I need to just uh, move up a little bit, but I know she's there. I can experience her presence even without seeing her, Um, and this is something about God as well. Friends, I don't know where you are today. Uh, You might be visiting us. You won't consider yourself a Christian, but there is something about the presence of God that we can experience whether we know the person or not, whether we even believe in the person or not. And this is really what we're unpacking this Christmas season, is the presence of God and the different attributes of His presence. We, we're reading here from Isaiah 9, which is just a, quite a well-known Christmas passage from the Bible, uh, chapter, verse 6, and it says this, that for to us a child is born... To us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Can you say that, Wonderful Counselor? counselor. Mighty God, God. Everlasting Father, Father. Prince of Peace. And these four names of God really help us to Uh, experience his presence. There are some of the aspects. He's a wonderful counselor. We can experience his guidance. You know, you might have experienced his guidance even this year, and you're not even, you don't even know about that. Uh, You might have received his wisdom. We can experience his power, friends, because he is mighty God. And that's really what I want to unpack today, that there is power, that this God is a God of power, uh, and we can experience that as part of his presence. And I know many of us around here, most of us around here, we know him, we love him, uh, and we need his power in his lives. Maybe more than ever, we need his power in his lives right now. You know, this year might have left us weak, um, but he can make us strong. This year might have left us struggling, but he can bring a supernatural power into our situation. And really, that's what I want to share with us. We're going to read one more uh, passage from the, from the scripture. This is another account of the birth of of Jesus. This is from Luke chapter 1, and this is when an angel visits Mary, the mother of Jesus, and shares with her that she's going to give birth to, to Jesus, which will be the Savior of the world and will be God himself. And Mary is a little blown away by it, but here's what happens from verse 31, Luke chapter 1 and verse 31. And behold, you will conceive in your womb And bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. Okay, that's a a king in history. And it was promised that the Savior would come through his lineage. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. I love that. Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin? Good question, right? And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child 
to be born will be called holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Say that. Nothing will be impossible with God. Great. <laughs> and Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is really the, the, the title. What we want to talk about is Mighty God. One of the names of, of the child born of Jesus is Mighty God. And he wasn't just mighty then, and he wasn't just mighty when he was born, but he is mighty now today. And the angel says to Mary, nothing will be impossible with God. And, and, and tells Mary this incredible thing that will happen, that she will bear a son, even though she's a virgin. That means she hasn't been with a man. And he gives Mary a, like a little step, I believe, to help Mary believe. Mary's like, wow, this is, this, is, this is a big thing that the angel is telling me. But the angel says to her, by the way, there's a sign for you. Your cousin Elizabeth, who's much older, who was called barren, is now uh, bearing a son in her womb. This is a sign. This is going to help you believe. This is a testimony of the fact that I am mighty God. This old lady who was called barren is now bearing a son, um, and he will be born soon in three months' time. And I believe that helps Mary. It activates something in her. And I believe God wants to do the same for you and me today, that there is a, a step that he wants to help us take up to believe again that he is mighty God, that nothing is impossible with him, that there are stories of things that have happened that can help us to believe this Christmas that God can do the impossible in our lives. So I want to share just a few with you very briefly. Number one, you can see this all the way on your left. Uh, that right there is Rudy and Myrta and their daughter Amelia. Now, during this year, of course, coronavirus has been rampant, and many people have contracted the virus. Many people have recovered by the grace of God. And there are a few that have been quite severe, and it just seemed very like they were getting worse and worse and worse. And we have a few like those in our congregation, in our church, in our community. You know, we have Dee, Diane, we have Henry. Uh, we have quite a few. There's more that were really ill. But one of them is, is this guy, Rudy. Um, and he seemed to get worse and worse and worse. And this was quite early on during the pandemic. And at some point, we just said, we got to get around this man. we got to pray for him. And we got to trust God that he's going to recover. And so a few of us got on our phones, and we just got onto Zoom. Just type in that chat box if you've not been on a Zoom call in 2020. If there's anyone out there that's not been on a Zoom call in 2020, we'd love to hear about you, okay? <laughs> We're going to connect you in to our community, because we love Zoom around here. But we jumped onto a Zoom call, and we prayed for Rudy. And, and with God as my witness, those people here as my witness, he, things started to turn around. And he started to get better, and he recovered, and today he is strong like he was before. And that's an incredible testimony of mighty God. Now, you might say to me, Greg, there's so many others that haven't recovered. What about them? But that really isn't the point that I'm trying to make here today. My point is that Mary needed an Elizabeth, okay, a story of something that God had done that would help her believe. And we need a Rudy today, a story of what God has done to help us believe. Here's another one, if you just go to the next, that's uh, Nigel there, Nigel and Yolanda. Nigel, also a member of our community, who's had a few struggling relationships. I won't go into the detail there, Nigel, I know you'll forgive me. Um, but he was really looking for someone, he was looking for a significant relationship, looking for a wife, uh, for years and years now, believing God. And this year, during COVID, during 2020, he got engaged to be married to this woman, Yolanda, which is what God has done behind the scenes as well. Met her sort of towards the end of last year, really started getting to know her this year, and they got engaged, right? Now, again, you might say, well, the, what about me? I, I haven't met someone yet. I'm looking for someone. And maybe as Mary needed an Elizabeth, today you need a Nigel. You need a story that's going to help you believe that God wants to connect you to the right person. 
Next photo we have over there, those are three beautiful ladies sitting at the patient relief mission in Kampala, Uganda. This is, a, this is an organization that we started here from this very room that we are broadcasting today. Uh, and a woman, a few women that had a vision to help cancer patients in Uganda. Set up a massive uh, facility hostel where these ladies can come and live. They can receive treatment at the local uh, cancer institute. They can be fed. They can get free accommodation, free transport, an incredible ministry. Check out patientreliefmission.org. But when the coronavirus hit uh, and when the pandemic hit and everything shut down, we seriously ran out of money to fund this thing. As you can imagine, these people, these patients, we typically have about 20 patients and 20 carers, 40 people that we are providing for at a time at the hostel, uh, and they don't pay for that. That's a free service, and it costs a lot of money to run. But by God's grace, uh, an acquaintance of mine got in touch, asked us to apply for this grant, and within a week, we received this grant that would fund the patient relief mission for more than a year. More than a year. I mean, that's a lot of money. I don't want to say the exact amount, but they gave us so much money to keep this thing going. And this, friends, is mighty God with whom anything is possible. Come on, somebody. Who provides for us. Now, you might need a story. Like Mary needed Elizabeth, you need a patient relief mission story for God's provision in your life to help you believe. Believe. Because this is what he does. I have one more story for us. Just a last story that I want to highlight here. This wasn't this year. This wasn't recent. But I just felt that God really wants us to share this story with you. Maybe this is some of a resurrection story. Um, and you'll see there a lady um, called Gailey and her daughter Angelica and their son Alexis there as well. This is a family in our congregation. A few years ago, Gailey was, was pregnant with Angelica and there was a medical thing that happened there. I don't quite understand it, but, but basically the placenta was attached to her womb. And the bigger the baby got, uh, the more her womb was tearing, and, and, and basically she was bleeding. Um, and the doctors, they were very, very concerned about the situation. And I remember one day, uh, Gailey's husband, Angel, phoned me and said to me that the doctors say, I must abort this baby. If I don't abort this baby, my wife will die. And I have to choose between Gailey and Angelica. I don't know what you would say in that situation. I didn't really have the words, but we came together to this point where we would believe God, that God would do a miracle, that we believed he is mighty God, and that with him anything is possible. And today, as you can see there in that photo, today we have Gailey and Angelica healthy, thriving, living their best life because of what God had done. Friends, these are just a few stories of so many that I could share with you. Now, there are many other stories that we don't understand why they go wrong. But these stories help us to believe Mary only needed one story of Elizabeth, and I believe that helped her to believe what God wanted to do in her life. And maybe one of these stories of, of God's healing and recovery, of God's relational reconciliation, of God's provision, of God's resurrection, is what you need today to help believe that He is mighty God and that there is hope for you. You know, the Bible, I was reading this. This has been in my spirit for a, a few weeks now. Proverbs 23, verse 18 says, Surely there is a future. Your hope will not be cut off. And I just want to say that to you today, that there is hope for you. There is a future for you because God is mighty God. And with him, anything is possible. Shall we pray together? Oh God, today we acknowledge that we don't understand everything. We don't understand all the brokenness and the difficulty in life. But we recognize these accounts of your hand where you move and where you do the impossible. And today we choose to set our sights on those. We focus on those. And we believe that you are able to do the impossible. That you are mighty God. And Father, I pray for every person, every person who's who's attending, who's on this service, God, that you 
rush into their situation, that you do something powerful in Jesus' name, where, where they need breakthrough for their health, God, that you come and be their healer, where you need breakthrough for their provision and finances, that you come and do that, Father, for relationships that need to be restored. We trust you, God. You are the great reconciler. Will you do that today? We trust for something to change today. I pray for every person that your blessing and your power comes in their lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.